The Glenn McConnell I-526 Improvement Project is one of the bonded projects. In other words, bonds were floated so that we could pay in advance for this work, thus beating, hopefully, inflation. The Glenn McConnell Parkway I-526 Improvement Project is located within the city of Charleston. The project includes improvements along Glen McConnell Parkway from Essex Farm Road to Orleans Road. The major components of the project improvement are these. The widening of Glen McConnell Parkway to provide an additional lane in each direction for the full length of the project. The widening of Magwood Drive at Glen McConnell Parkway intersection which is near Home Depot, McDonald's, that side of the highway. This is being done to allow for dual left turn lanes and a through or right turn lane onto Glen McConnell Parkway. The widening of Magwood Drive at the Glen McConnell Parkway is near the intersection you would know that by the hospital, which is on the side of the highway. It provides for a left turn only lane, a single through lane, and a right turn lane onto Glen McConnell Parkway. Adjusting the stoplight timing at the intersection of Magwood Drive and Glen McConnell Parkway to allow left turns from both northbound and southbound lanes of Magwood Drive. That will occur at the same time. Closing the median on Glen McConnell Parkway at Frontage Road has happened to prohibit left turns and U-turns for improved safety. Lengthening the left turn lanes on Glen McConnell Parkway toward I-526 eastbound towards North Charleston and Mount Pleasant in order to allow more room for vehicles waiting to turn. Constructing a five foot wide concrete sidewalk along Magwood Drive to connect to the existing sidewalk has also taken place. Pedestrian signals will be installed on both sides of Glen McConnell Parkway to allow for pedestrians who wish to cross the intersection and an eight-foot wide paved shoulder will be constructed, with the exception of the interchange ramp area. Creating earthen sound buffers, which include landscaping along the northbound lanes of Glen McConnell Parkway to provide a buffer for nearby neighborhoods. More on buffers and design of this project, I'm going to talk with Peter Valaket. Peter, a lot goes into design. What is designing a road anyhow, like Glen McConnell I-526? What, what's involved there? Well, it's an involved process starting, uh, starting with public involvement. We have a number of public meetings to uh, flesh out you know, what the goals of the project are, what our objectives are. And uh, after, after some of those items get, uh, get worked out, we go to the designers and get them to actually put uh, pen to paper or you know, computers these days. and um, actually do all the engineering work that will enable a contractor and tell the contractor exactly how to build the project and exactly what to build. Well, the Glen McConnell project uh, was more straightforward than some of our other projects. Uh, the key reasons for that were uh, Glen McConnell Parkway generally had an, uh, enough right-of-way, uh, with some exceptions to widen the road without a whole lot of right-of-way acquisition. Also, the utilities out there are not as congested as they are in some more urban areas like our B Street and Courtney Drive project downtown. So it was more straightforward than some of our others. And all, all of our projects really began with this program from square one. There, there were not plans on the shelf ready to go. And uh, through all these projects, we, uh, we had to engage designers to prepare the plans and work out all the details. And there's a lot of details that uh, that need to be finalized before it can be bid so that the contractors just know exactly what they're bidding on. And there's a lot of little things like the signal design and the striping and maintenance of traffic and uh, all the specifications that go with those things that have to be finalized before it can go to construction. Now, that takes a while. 
what a year or five months what well it depends a lot on me. it depends a lot on the duration of the project and there's many steps that they go through um, we have uh, three major steps that the designers submit on. They submit us preliminary plans, which have to go through review. We typically call those about 30% complete. And then uh, when everybody's accepted those, they submit a set of right-of-way plans, which are generally 70% complete. And those plans will identify all the right-of-way needs for the project. And that, uh, that brings it back to our right-of-way agents who go out, meet with the public, and acquire the property uh, that, that they, we need to build the job. And while that's going on, the designers are working on the final construction plans, fleshing out all those details that I mentioned. And so it, it is an involved process. Uh, it can take many years in some cases, or in a simple, or, you know, simple project like little turn lanes and things like that, maybe just a few months. Why that project? What is it supposed to accomplish for the public? Well, uh, Glen McConnell, of course, is a very highly traveled corridor, and it's, it's uh, experienced a good bit of congestion. And, and the city had worked with the DOT prior to the county uh, being responsible for preparing the plans, identified it as a need, and was able to get some traffic studies done that really served as the impetus for, for the work that's going on today. Um, and it's a, it's a corridor a lot of people in West Ashley are familiar with that experiences congestion, particularly in AM and PM peak hours, where traffic can back up on I-526 or or backs up further on down Glen McConnell Parkway towards Beast Ferry Road. Are, are those the kinds of things, traffic congestion and the like, that requires improvements to a road, or are there other elements involved? Well, it is, it is uh, uh, the main roadway improvements are, of course, to address the traffic, but also this project addresses some of the pedestrian needs. Uh, specifically on Magwood uh, Drive, there will be sidewalks constructed that really will connect the hospital facilities on one side of Glen McConnell Parkway with some of the commercial and restaurants on the opposite side. So there will be crosswalks across, across uh, Glen McConnell with pedestrian actuated signals to provide those protected phases for crossing uh, Glen McConnell. I know safety is one of your primary purposes and when you design a road you're always looking to uh, do something to improve safety. There were a couple of U-turns out there. Yeah, there were some unsafe situations that are being addressed with this project. Uh, specifically, uh, you know, a lot of people are familiar with the uh, their crossings in front of uh, Lowe's and closer to I-526 there was a crossover. And a lot of accidents were experienced at those intersections and this project will remove those movements and uh, prevent any people from crossing several lanes of traffic which can be dangerous and there's been a history of accidents with that. Do you think that this project will remain as it is now, uh, when it's finished that is, will it be a project that can be used just like it's been built for years to come? In other words, what's the duration of this project doing the job it's, it's going to do? Well this particular project was identified in the, in the traffic study I referred to earlier as the immediate needs to address the traffic that's out there today. Uh, Glen McConnell, the traffic projections for that road are significant and additional improvements would be needed as those traffic volumes increase in the future years. Um, and uh, addressing these traffic volumes is, is a continuing process, a typical design horizon. You try to accommodate traffic that you project to uh, have go through the road 20 years out. So you have a continuing progression of projects uh, that you try to plan for. Well, most of our projects, of course, occur on pretty hev heavily traveled roadways. And we try to inconvenience the public as minimum, as, as least as possible. And to do that, they do work during off-peak hours, which of course is at night. Uh, they, they, uh, they do have crews out there, but most people don't even realize that they're asleep and those guys are out there working uh, with, with lighting, lighting the roadway so they can see what they're doing. But uh, most of our projects are at night. Does that work out pretty well? Well, it, uh, we hope that it works out for the public um, and those guys do. Uh, do a lot of put a lot of effort in to get that done and minimizing any traffic congestion. And the Charleston County Transportation Sales Tax Program alerts the public yep. when there is going to be a deviation from the way the traffic's flowing. Yeah, whenever there's going to be lane closures or a shift in traffic, we try to put a uh, press release out and distribute that to uh, major news outlets so that they can help people to plan in advance. Well, we here on Charleston County Roadwise, the Transportation Sales Tax Program. That is, we hope that you've gotten a, a great deal of information. Uh, we'd like you to watch this program often. I think you're going to find out that a lot goes on behind the scenes, and uh, we want you to know all about that. It's information for you.
and, uh, and for you and your family in the community. We want you to uh, join us again. Uh, we'll be back with RoadWise and sharing other interesting information about the building of roads. It's, it's really fascinating, and we'll do that again the next time. Please remember that if you're looking for any additional information, we are at www.ccroadwise.com. We'll see you the next time.